In the 20th century, the German nation has tried twice to conquer the whole of Europe. Both attempts have failed, but now, as the new millennium dawns upon us, we will try a third time to assert our dominance over Europe. Though this time not militarily, but through something called the European Union. So, you've seen the title? Today we'll be trying to form the United States of Europe as Germany in the Millennium Dawn. Our ultimate goal is to reach this focus. And after we form the United States of Europe, we will have the choice to do some interesting things to say the least. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves, as before we can form the United States of Europe, we have to pass a lot of shit in the European Parliament. So let us just strap ourselves in for a heck of a lot of RNG, pain, and just absolutely amazing game speed. This this mod runs slower than Kaiserreich. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, and after uh, what it seems like a century of waiting, it is finally time for us to complete our first act in the European Union. The peoples of Europe, in creating an ever closer union among them, are resolved to share a peaceful future based on the principles of democracy and the rule of law. Uh, so basically to pass an act, uh, we have two places that we need to get through. The European Parliament here and the European Council here. And we can start influencing different parties in order to try to get a majority out of the European Parliament. And now we can approve the Charter. And now we move on to European Council. And now we gonna vote yes. And finally, the proposal was accepted. Are you confused yet? Good, because you should be. Now just repeat that over the Treaty of Lisbon, these five focuses here, these two focuses, these two focuses, and then we've got the United States of Europe. <sighs> Alright, and now we have Treaty of Lisbon again. Accepted. Hey, and here Merkel is now our leader. Alright, and now I'm going to tell you what happens when a bill doesn't pass through the Council of European Union. So, uh, the EFSF is not that popular among liberals and libertarians. And as a result, Belgium here, which is uh, led by a liberal government, doesn't really want to vote yes. So as a result, yeah, the proposal was dismissed. But no matter, or we can retry after 30 days, and this time, the EFSF is following a qualified majority voting, which would only need a majority of countries to agree with the bill. So it doesn't matter if you vote no Belgium, the proposal was accepted nevertheless. Uh, occasionally, a bill is so unpopular that only 30% of the European Union population actually supports it. In which case, uh, we can do a little uh, influencing in different countries. See if that changes their opinions a little. Ah, and there we go. The proposal was accepted. Alright, uh, now that we're done with the European Minister of Economy and Finance, uh, our next step is actually to do the federalization of the European Union. But before I do this, I, I, let's just take a step back for a moment and start actually expanding the European Union uh, for a little, since uh, the European Union, yeah, it's not, it's not particularly large right now. Oh, and here we've got, uh, yeah, it's a little topical. Alright, and uh, now that the European Union has been expanded for a little, we can now finally complete the federalization of the European Union. The process of European integration has reached a state where any further integration will lead to a federalization of the European Union. And that has passed with an overwhelming 35 yes. And now finally, we can complete the United States of Europe. After more than 70 years of European integration, the member states of European Union have decided to give up their sovereignty and form the United States of Europe. And here in the European Parliament comes the most important vote in the history of Europe. And with the support of the European People's Party, the Socialist Democrats, the Communists and the Green Party, the bill is approved. And for the Council of Europe, it would seem that the United Kingdom and Spain is tilted towards voting no. But uh, with the help of a little bribing for the United States of Europe, the proposal was accepted. 
and a speech given after the Second World War, Churchill concluded, We must build a kind of United States of Europe, and this way only will hundreds of millions of toilers be able to regain the simple joys and hopes which make life worth living. Therefore I say to you, let Europe arise, O to joy. And from that, we have annexed the whole of the European Union, and now the brothers of Europe, stretching all the way from Greenland to the east of Ukraine, stand hand in hand as one people. Now with that out of the way, let's have some fun, shall we? The unified European Union needs to constitute itself as a new nation. The constitution and the unification treaties are one thing, but now the people need to fulfill that legal framework with life. And now we're going to have a European officer corps, and we're going to bring back the European political parties, as well as European patriotism. Alright, and here we actually have a choice uh, to decide the future of the fate of Europe. You know what? Let's go monarchist, uh, because why not? And we're going to create the Holy European Empire. So we're going to do the cross and the crown, and Europe needs to fulfill its legacy and become an empire once again. And now we actually get to choose the house of our monarch, and we're going to choose the house of Hohenzollern. And for the palace, we're also going to choose the summer palace of Frederick the Great. And now, after all of that uh, hassle, we can finally complete the coronation. And we're also going to be chosen by the Pope, because uh, public elections, who needs that? And with that focused on, we are now the Holy European Empire, led by Frederick the Fourth, and I notice Frederick doesn't have a portrait. That's better. And now, under Emperor Frederick's guidance, we're going to do a game of spheres, and we're going to brawl with the bear and declare war on Russia as our first step of achieving world dominance. All right, the stage is set. We are prepared for our invasion of Russia, and let us launch Operation Russian. Freedom. Oh, and there we go. Within just one month of the invasion, we have successfully reached Moscow. Oh, and that's their entire army encircled. Jesus will crush the Russian army so hard that all that's left is one single division. And there we go. With just under half a year of time, we have successfully defeated the Russian bear. And there we have it. The Russian government has gone into exile and their main forces have capitulated to the Holy European Empire. Now, 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 who's next on the chopping board? Belarus here is kind of getting in the way of our Holy European Empire. Problem is, they're guaranteed by the Americans. I didn't think I'd have to fight the Americans this early, but I guess we have to do it. Oh, and it seems like the People's Republic of China actually declared war on Taiwan. And I guess this begins World War III actually. And now as the war escalates here, we can clearly see two blocks forming. The counteractors were going to form a new faction, the Holy Alliance. And now there are three blocks of power in the world. Who will succeed? Well, let's find out. So, the stage is set, and now we're prepared for invasion of Belarus and the United States. So, let's declare war on Belarus and begin the Holy Alliance intervention in World War III. And here, Belarus has capitulated. And the next step is to invade the east coast of America. Let's do this. And 
as it seems like with the invasion of the East Coast, the United States has given up the Organization of Peace and Stability and went on to form NATO. All right, and now that uh, we've successfully kind of secured a beachhead, we're going to launch a second wave of invasions to Florida and the North. And as our invasion of America is starting to slow down for a bit, I have also initiated a naval invasion of the Turkish coast. And here after around four months of stalemate, I think we're finally starting to break through in America. And now, the United States of America has officially capitulated. And now, our war against NATO is finally won. Alright, and there we go. I think I've created some uh, decent borders here. All of Europe is ours. America is split between UNESCO controlling the West and the Holy Alliance controlling the East. Somehow the Organization of Peace and Stability has still not surrendered yet. Uh, so I guess I need to naval invade Nigeria now. All right, and now we have defeated the Organization of Peace and Stability as well. So now there's only two main factions in the world stage. The Holy Alliance led by us and UNISO led by China. Now obviously we couldn't let there be any other superpower. So therefore, China, you're going down as well. And alright, uh, we've got some nice encirclements here. Hey, and with this encirclement, I think the Cossacks are pretty close to falling. Alright, and meanwhile, uh, since uh, the Chinese frontier is really starting to grind up, I've started a naval invasion in central China here. And on top of the central Chinese naval invasion, I've also launched a naval invasion here in Brazil, and hopefully that's going to be enough to defeat them. And in the north here, Beijing has fallen to the advancing Holy European Army. And there we go, Brazil has capitulated. And there we go, Hong Kong's about to fall. I'm now in Holy European Empire territory now, I guess. And finally, after almost a, after over a year of bloody fighting, China 
has capitulated. And now, after the Treaty of Urumqi, Unisol exists now only in Africa, and the Holy Alliance dominates the entire world. And with that, we will end today's video. 15 years. 15 years is what it took for Europe to be unified and for Germany to conquer the entire world. Now, from Berlin to Moscow, from Beijing to Washington, the flag of the Holy European Empire rises evermore. Uh, to be quite honest, uh, 15 years in Millennium Dawn, quite a pain. It takes one hour alone to run one year in this mod, so you can just imagine how long it took for me to reach 15 years. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't yet, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next video. All hell, Frederick IV.